Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks, or send them to me, please. And you can also change the quality settings of this video for the highest one for better graphics. In the previous video, we looked at what happens when um, pathogen invades our body. So for example, in the tissue, if we have a nail, which brings in certain pathogens inside the body, what, how would our body respond? Well, this tissue will become inflamed and the innate immune cells will try to, um, well, try to destroy the pathogens before it does any damage. Um, the innate cells, such as the mast cells and macrophages, play a critical role, including the complement proteins, which help in, this, in, the, in, the, in the destruction process. Of course, more macrophages and neutrophils are recruited to the inflamed area, which potentially could be infected. So what happens is, um, in case of inflammation, more leukocytes are recruited by other leukocytes in the area um, to basically destroy the pathogen or to stop the pathogen in its tracks. A dendritic cell plays a critical role here in that it connects the innate immune system to the adaptive immune system so that the adaptive immune cells, such as the T and B cells, can help um, in initiating a bigger immune response. So when the dendritic cell becomes activated by um, phagocytizing an antigen, it moves into uh, the lymph node through the afferent vessel. And that is essentially where we left off in the previous video. In this video, we're going to see how the dendritic cells brings the antigen into the lymph node and activates T naive T cells. It activates the naive T cells to become uh, either T helper cells, T killer cells, or even T memory cells. And so this video will concentrate on the T cell activation. Um, and I called it also uh, the cell mediated immunity because without the T cells, we cannot actually uh, call the cell mediated immunity cell mediated immunity. Now it should be noted that the adaptive immune system can be divided into two parts the cell mediated immunity and the humoral immunity. Um, and, these, and the difference between the two is that the cell-mediated immunity is specifically uh, cell-mediated, meaning that it doesn't, it doesn't have any antibodies or molecules um, concerning this cell-mediated immunity. It's just cells interacting with cells to destroy the pathogen. And that is why T-cells have an important role, because they essentially um, are, are, the, are the backbone to the cell-mediated immunity. Similarly, uh, we will learn later that the humoral immunity is mainly the B cells with its antibodies. So going back to this diagram, the dendritic cell uh, travels to the lymph node with the antigen of the pathogen. And the dendritic cell will then present the antigen to the naive T cells to activate it in the paracortex. So here if we have the dendritic cell with the, with the antigens, it will present it to the naive CD8 T cell for example. The naive CD8 T cell can then differentiate and be activated into a T killer cell or a T memory cell, both with CD8 co-receptors. We will not talk about the T memory cells that much, we will mainly concentrate on the T killer cells. The dendritic cell can also present the antigen to a naive CD4 T cell, which will activate it. And then this naive CD4 T cell, when activated, it can differentiate, of course, first of all, into different types of T helper cells, uh, specifically uh, T helper cells such as T helper 1, T helper 2, and T helper 17. Uh, and as you can see, the CD4 T cells, when it's activated, it will become T helper cells mainly. And then the naive uh, CD8 T cell will usually um, be activated to, to form a T killer cell. And so that is why we usually say a CD4 cell is a T helper and a CD8 cell is a T killer, if that makes sense. So looking back at this lymph node, we have the naive CD8 CD T cell becoming a T killer and the naive CD4 T cell becoming a T helper. Let's stop there and look at the big immunology map again and look at the activation of these naive T cells in a lot more detail. So we last left off in this infected area, this, uh, the tissue, the infected tissue, inflamed tissue, where, where a pathogen has just invaded the body. Now the dendritic cell has previously just engulfed the pathogen and begin expressing the antigen of the pathogen on its surface. And also it has undergone licensing where it begins expressing 
proteins such as CCR7, which uh, CCR7 is then attracted to the chemokines uh, coming from the lymph node, which means that uh, this allows the dendritic cell to move to, uh, to the lymph node. Something important to know is that if these pathogens are too big for the innate immune cells to control, they might start moving around the body uh, through the lymphatic system, for example, through circulation. And so it might come into the lymph node, and, and, and here the B cells can actually uh, recognize it with its antibody and then engulf it. So this is just an uh, important concept to know. So anyway, let us follow this dendritic cell, this activated dendritic cell, with the ant which is going to bring the antigen into the lymph node. So the dendritic cell circulates through the lymphatic vessels and then enters the lymph node through the afferent lymph vessel. So here the dendritic cell with the antigen um, on the MHC complex brings it into the lymph node. And the dendritic cell will come through this way, through the lymph vessel, and enter the paracortex. So the dendritic cells are here. And then dendritic cells, remember, have the antigen uh, presented on an MHC complex. So now when the dendritic cells are within the paracortex, these naive T cells will begin to approach it and, tr and begin trying to recognize the antigen presented by the dendritic cell. For example, if this naive CD8 T cell uh, recognizes this antigen uh, from this presented by this dendritic cell, the naive CD8 T cell will become activated. Let's have a closer look at this process. So here we have the naive CD8 T cell. Let's look at some receptors and co-receptors that are important in the activation process. So for the naive CD8 T cell, we have the TCR, which is the T cell receptor, CD8 co-receptor, and the CD28 receptor. The dendritic cell with the antigen uh, presents the antigen with an MHC class 1 complex. And the dendritic cell also has a B7 receptor. The presentation of the antigen by the dendritic cell on the MHC complex is vital for the activation of the naive CD8 T cell. However, the B7 on the dendritic cell is also important um, in, in activating um, and promoting the survival of this T cell as well. So once this naive CD8 T cell uh, will become activated through, uh, through specific signals from the dendritic cell, the naive uh, CD8 T cell will begin secreting its own cytokines, such as interleukin-2, which then um, initiates proliferation and differentiation of this particular naive uh, CD8 T cell. And so through this, the CD8 T cell can become a T killer cell or a T memory cell, both with a CD8 co-receptor and also a T cell receptor. However, in this video, we're mainly going to concentrate on the T killer cell. And the T killer cell can also be known as a cytotoxic T, T cell. And they kill target cells and they're important in defense um, against intercellular pathogens such as viruses, for example, and also infected cells. So they're like natural killer cells in a way, when you think about it. So from the CD8 naive T cell, we have a T killer cell in the paracortex over here. So let's see what happens with the naive CD4 T cell. What happens when it, when it becomes activated through the presentation of the antigen from the dendritic cell here. Let's have a closer look. So here we have the naive CD4 T cell. Let's look at some important receptors um, as we did with the naive CD8 T cell. So the naive CD4 T cell has also the TCR, which is the uh, T cell receptor. It has a CD4 co-receptor, and also it also has a CD28. Another important um, uh, protein it, it expresses is called the LFA1. The dendritic cell will present the antigen on an MHC class 2. So remember, the previous dendritic cell presented it on the MHC class 1 to the CD8. Here we have an MHC class 2. And the dendritic cell also has a B7 receptor and an ICAM1 receptor. What is important to know is that the dendritic cell presents the antigen on MHC class 2 to the naive CD4 T cell. And that the B7 receptor and the CD28 receptor are important because it increases survival and activation of the CD4 T cell. The LFA1 on the naive CD T cell together with the ICAM1 from the dendritic cell, provides stability 
so that the naive CD4 T cell can become activated easily. The dendritic cell also secretes cytokines as well as um, other cells in, um, in the body, which will promote the differentiation of the CD4 T cell to a particular type of T helper cell. So depending on what cytokines um, are around will determine what type of T helper cell this naive CD4 T cell will become. So for example, if there are a lot of interleukin 12s and interferon gammas, um, the naive CD4 T cell will become a T helper 1 cell, abbreviated TH1. And the T helper 1 uh, cell's role is to, is to activate macrophages through cytokines interferon gamma. And it, so it tells the macrophage to engulf pathogens and also uh, pr uh, promotes, tells the macrophage to allow it to destroy a particular pathogen. And T helper 1 cell also has a role in activating B cells. If there are many interleukin 4s around, this naive CD4 T cell will become a T helper 2 cell, abbreviated TH2. And the T helper 2 cell uh, has a role in recruitment and activate, activation of granulocytes within circulations. If cytokines insulin like growth factor beta and interleukin 6 um, are used for the activation of the naive CD4 T cell, it will become a T helper 17, abbreviated TH17. And the T helper 17 secretes interleukin-17, hence the name, and causes epithelial cells to recruit more leukocytes to infected area. And if we have, uh, uh, again, only insulin-like growth factor beta, this naive CD4 T cell will differentiate to become a T helper regulator, or more specifically, a regulatory T cell, abbreviated T reg. And as the name suggests, it regulates things. So in this case, it regulates the activity of T cells by inhibiting the immature dendritic cells to come into the lymph node because the dendritic cell, as we know, activates the T cells. If it's only specifically interleukin-6 that, that's around, this naive CD4 T cell will differentiate into what's called a TFH. TFH essentially expresses the same receptors and cytokines as T helper 1 and the T helper 2 cells. And we just call it TFH because it has a main role in activating B cells, allowing it to differentiate and class switch and proliferate as well. So back to this, uh, uh, the paracortex, the naive CD4 T cells essentially um, is activated to become uh, many types of T helper cells. And these T helper cells with the T killer cells will then uh, migrate out of the lymph node through the lymph vessel, so it moves out here. And the T cells will travel to the site of infection and inflammation via the lymph circulation, essentially, to assist in destroying the pathogen. However, this TFH cell, uh, as well as possibly T helper 1 and T helper 2 cell, also has a role in activating B cells, so they can stay in the paracortex. Let's just look at the immature B cell in the cortex first. Now, the immature B cell can recognize a pathogen within the cortex or in the blood because Remember, the pathogen was, was moving around the body by now through infection. And this naive B cell will recognize the pathogen through, through the antibody it expresses. And then the naive B cell will engulf the pathogen and express it on an MHC complex, an MHC class 2. And the naive B cell will move into the germinal center and will wait for the activation of the T helper cell. So here in the paracortex, we have the... Uh, the T helper cell, such as the TFH, or the TH1 and TH2. So for example, the TFH, the T follicular helper cell, will move into the germinal center. The T helper 1 or the T helper 2 will activate this immature B cell within the germinal center to undergo proliferation and differentiation. So it's not the TFH that uh, activates the immature B cell here. It's the T helper 1 or T helper 2. The TFH will move into the germinal center so it can activate class switching and proliferation of the B cells within the germinal center. And that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we will look at the activation of the B cells in the germinal center. Thank you.